What's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have another match from the Swiss from Gen Con 2017 North American Championship Joust. In this match we have Kyle Vansel of the White Book Podcast fame, one of their uh, seasonal co-hosts. And uh, we also have Ben. So Kyle's on the left, Ben's on the right, Kyle's playing a Lannister Reigns. We got Greyjoy Reigns on the other side. Looks like we got Jamie Lannister with the bodyguard and a Lannisport merchant to start on the Lannister side. And uh, we got Asha Greyjoy, an Iron Lannister fishmonger, and a great haul to start on the Greyjoy Reign side of things for setup. So this is round five of Swiss, the last round of Swiss. The final Swiss game, I think, quote unquote, we're posting. Next is going to be the graduated cut. Uh, four matches, two from each of the two rounds of graduated cut, which technically are Swiss also. I should have probably just called them all Swiss, but it's a graduated cut to the 32. Uh, top 32 players, I believe it was. And they're both flipping Summer Harvest here. And then we see uh, FFG employee dropping by the uh, little Gen Con 2017 medals for everyone. For making it to the final round of Swiss and not running away to the convention hall. So they're working out how it works here. Uh, I think it's Kyle there's not understanding completely. There is some weird rulings with like Varus Riddle and how they hit, but it's just plus two on the printed gold. So it's zero on both. So they're just getting two gold. And it looks like uh, Kyle, the Lancer player, is going first here. He's played a Western Fiefdoms and Nelta Landsport Merchant. He's put in another Landsport Merchant. So both players kind of choking each other out here. Trying to make sure they're not uh, marchable next turn for their uh, Asha or their Jamie. Which Kyle looks like he's in his spot here with two Landsport Merchants. So one can die from claim if necessary. And uh, But he's able to pay for a Hound full cost there. So Hound should be able to uh, protect him here. Or maybe be a little more aggressive on the offense. He still saves a gold. What could the Lancer player play with one gold? Hmm. Maybe you'll see a treachery on Asha trying to stand up. I doubt it, but it's possible. See Asha dupe in the hand of Ben here. Not putting it on the board yet. But he's knelt his Great Hall. He's knelt his Iron Island's Fishmonger. I think he spent his two gold to get a Priest of the Drowned God in there. Trying to get some intrigue on the table. Still not enough for reigns, though. There's the Asha dupe. Now, I'm personally curious. Is this a Greyjoy reigns deck that's using the the markets, the econ location for the Greyjoy, where they need eight discard cards, eight cards in the other opponent's discard pile, in the opponent's discard pile, uh, to get economy, and are they using Varus to seed the discard pile? I've seen that variation of Greyjoy reigns seems to be the most popular. Or is it not running that and just using standard economy, Great Halls? We know it's using Great Hall, obviously. So we see Jamie coming in on Mill. He kills the Iron Islands Fishmonger there. And now Jamie doing an Intrigue. And we got a Tears of Lease on Asha. It's going to get rid of a dupe, most likely. Or maybe we see a Risen played in to give her plus one. Did you grab a card out of hand? I didn't catch that there for the entry claim. I'm not sure. And we got an unopposed power gain and a power here. No no claim, though, uh, since there's no power on the opponent's house guard. And, of course, force reaction sending the hound back to hand. Yeah, the opponent's nice enough to remember there's claim for intrigue. Kyle didn't care to take a card from hand, I guess. <laughs> but he gets Victorian Greyjoy. Great pull. Wow. That hurts. So let's see Asha run a little wild here. So Asha doing the unopposed military, obviously, standing up, killing a Landsport Merchant. And now coming in on unopposed power, stealing a power back this time uh, for the power challenge. And getting an unopposed and standing up to help for dominance. So 
So it looks like that uh, Priest of the Drowned God was used to block on the Intrigue to stop a range trigger here in the first round. Didn't want to have his Asha knelt down, I guess. So on to round two. Jamie's got a power on him for Renown there. Lancer players at two. Greyjoy players at four. Power gained. Both players burning one of their economy plots here in the first round and getting nothing from it. Are we going to see two economy plots here played second just to try to get something on the board going? Really sucks when one of your econ plots does becomes useless, but at least in this case, it's balanced on both sides. Not like a naval superiority hitting a kingdom edict or whatever. Really decimating the opponent. But even then, like... Your opponent usually has two gold up on you after hitting you with an able, so still not too crazy. It's not as bad as a Varus Riddle into Summer Harvest, in my opinion. That's a, that's a big swinging economy there. All right, so Kyle went big economy, went trading, give his opponent three gold. And we got an attachment removed to get the bodyguard off of Jamie. And maybe Ben was thinking he was going to get Valored by Kyle, the Lancer player here, after uh, doing that Tears on Asha to get rid of the dupe. Thought it'd be a juicy chance to kill Asha, maybe clear the board of the of the of the Greyjoy player, and instead he plays uh, Confiscation, hoping to remove the bodyguard, get initiative, do that before Valor kicks off. And have Jamie die also, but that's not the case. Kyle goes the opposite way. He wants to play a bunch of stuff, so he throws a bodyguard on Jamie. So he's going to stick around. Now he's got to figure out how he's going to spend the rest of his mountain of gold. Well, I take a view. I'm putting it to the deck right now. And guys, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Helps out the channel. It's free. Hit that subscribe button below. And while you're doing that, after you hit subscribe, hit that notification bell button beside it to be notified when new videos go up or when we go live. Otherwise, you'll only get uh, random YouTube notifications. Every now and then, you might miss some videos that way. Uh, but if you hit that little bell, you'll be notified every time a video goes up. And of course, if you like Game of Thrones, a card game on this channel, make sure you slap that like button on every damn Game of Thrones video to show me that uh, that's what you want to see. So we got Cersei. And personally, my favorite Cersei, the course that Cersei, Raisin Claim, four cost Cersei. I mean, the other one's awesome. Seven cost, doesn't yield to attack. That's juicy too. Getting that power for plucking cards, but... I like to take more cards from my opponent's hand, not just get rewarded for one card. I'd rather have more in their discard pile than me having power on a character. And spending three less, but that's just me. Both are awesome, both have cards to support them, which is nice. So it looks like six gold saved on the Lannister side. Greyjoy player taking seven economy. He's got a great haul there to help out. Let's see what uh, he can get in play here. And prevent his opponent from winning a entry challenge by five. And triggering reigns. And maybe he can trigger his own reigns possibly. He can prevent it and have enough. But Greyjoy obviously having less green icons in their deck and on their characters by default. It's going to be hard for the Greyjoy reigns to get the uh, get ahead in the intrigue department unless they can use tricks like uh, throwing uh, pointeds or little birds on like Asha with stealth or using Victorion when they go first to uh, kneel with intimidate to help them get their intrigues through it's going to be tough to get past the intrigue uh, in the Lannister decks for sure but uh, it's cu I'm curious to see how this plays out they're all builders right Now, even though this is the final round of Swiss, both these players, I think this is the top table, uh, if I remember correctly, or table number two. So either way, this is, this is the top, top, some of the top players here for sure. 
Definitely making it into the top 32 graduated cut. Um, but that's still technically basically seven rounds of Swiss for them. So this is just round five. So they definitely want to win here. This is not just like a win and in kind of thing. They don't care. It's not a big deal. Or not winning in, sorry. They're both just like, there's no pressure. They're both going to make it. But it could matter in the, in the graduated cut if they make it beyond that into the elimination rounds. So every win matters here. And okay, we got Aaron Dampere. The six cost one that gets to stand or kneel a guy after uh, they're saved on both sides of the board. And we got Pike giving out stealth just by kneeling. Two bucks for point and click stealth. Great little location. So this is how the Greyjoy player is going to get the advantage uh, with the intrigue icons. Is what I was talking about, adding some extra stealth to his force strength or intrigue. There might might be how he's going to get some uh, help with the priest of the drowned gods on the side. Maybe he'll be able to get some range action, or at least make the Lancer player try to overcommit on the intrigue here to try to get a range through. But of course. It's going to start with the Jamie on the military, which can't be fully blocked with what we see on the board right now, which means somebody's going to have to be claimed, unless uh, the Greyjoy player has an in-hand save like Risen from the Sea. No defenders. And the Priest of Drown Drown God is gone. So we're not going to see any rains happening from the Greyjoy player, it looks like, here. If he, had a stand, or if he had a save in hand, I'm sure he would have defended a little bit there, threw in the save on a character, and stood them with uh, Aaron Damper there, and then uh, would have had plus one strength also. And Alex looks like got an intrigue with Cersei and Jamie. Nine strength. Going to be claimed to Cersei being in the challenge. And uh, with Aaron on the board there, he's not going to be able to stop the range trigger either. So we most likely see a kneel here on Asha. Helps protect his board there for military claim on the Lancer side. So. And don't forget, the Lancer player still has the Hound in hand, which that uh, six gold save there for that is easily spent on a Hound. And the other two could be spent on a Burn Man or put to the sword or anything like that. I guess not put to the sword now, but uh, could have been. Most likely a Burn Man's in hand or a Hound. Or, both, or well, we know the Hound's there, but see what uh, range trigger he goes with here, or what scheme plot he chooses, I mean. He is going to filthy Asha like I predicted. Makes sense. So claim of two here. Gets Dagmar and someone else in there. Looks like it might have been a Euron. It could be wrong. I think it had three icons. Uh, but either way, Victorion, we've seen Dagmar both hit the discard pile. And uh, those are some bomb characters, which I'm sure if the Summer Harvest wasn't hit so hard first round, we'd see one of them in play also. And now the Hound coming in on a power challenge, going on a pose. And back to hand. So I think we got Pike Nell to give stealth there to Aaron. Damn pair. I think you just do intrigue here. He's going to do power, stealth the Landsport Merchant, I think is what he said. No defenders. So I 
think we are tied 5-5 five to five right now. And I think 6-5 for the Lancer player. Oh no, two powers on Jamie. I think five on the house guard. So maybe we're at 7-5 to five actually now. I do like the giant poker chips Kyle's using. I think they're awesome to play with. Just uh, might be a little hard with how they're stacked to actually uh, keep track of power tools. I'll try my best here. And it looks like we have March to the Wall on the left there. Played into a trading now on the other side to give three gold to his opponent. And obviously March a great call for the Lancer player. Should have saw that coming with a, a six coster and a five coster across the board. And it looks like Asha might get marched. I don't know. Is that the right call? I know it's a range deck. You want that intrigue on the board to even prevent your opponent's range from triggering. I'm not sure if that's the right call. That's two Oshas now in the discard pile. Looks like the Lancer player is going first again here. He won initiative. He's chosen to go first. Makes sense with Jamie on the board. Attacking with military without kneeling. Cersei putting that two claim intrigue pressure on. Get the hound played out there. Kneeling the fiefdoms and spending two gold. And he's not going to commit much more. He knows that Valor is coming. And... Uh, but the Greyjoy player definitely is running it. But he just played a 10 gold plot. So he's definitely going to have to put some stuff of his own on the board here. But Kyle not wanting to commit too much most likely. And then possibly the Greyjoy player just doesn't really marshal much. And then uh, hits with a Valor. But he, there's a bodyguard across the table. So you know the Hound can get back to hand. So maybe the Valor wouldn't be that great right now. But Kyle definitely making it not great for his opponent. Let's see what Ben can get out here. When he gets an Iron Mines in play, that'll help. <laughs> and we get Varus. So it is the Varus flavor of the Greyjoy Reigns. Varus a great call in the Greyjoy range since he's got stealth in that intrigue icon. Definitely helps get uh, your range triggers off there. And the reader. Alright, this isn't over yet here. But, but no military icons on the Greyjoy side. Oh, Queen's Assassin ambushed in for four. More cards in Lancer player's hand means the Greyjoy player is going to have to choose and kill someone. No one's kneeling, so this the Iron, uh, the iron Mine save isn't going to stand anyone, which is too bad. That is dirty. Does he just kill someone and save that Iron Mines for getting a standoff in the challenge phase? Or not even care, since he's going to pop Varus at the end of the round, and... Uh, Everyone's going to go away anyway. But uh, there is still at least a gold there saved on the Lancer side. And I believe they have a card, event card, that can uh, deal with Varus. Uh, that is usually played in every single Lancer deck. Uh, I believe it's called Treachery. <laughs> Not to mention Nightmares is a thing too. So we'll see here. But I'm feeling bad for Ben on the Greyjoy side. It's not looking good for him. And of course we get the military here with Jamie going on a pose. Gets the unopposed power. He's definitely going to get the renown on Jamie. Just getting way ahead in the power here. Not to mention the claim. Do you bother saving anyone? I say no, but 
save that Iron Mines for the next round, but we're still going to have Jamie out there. That bodyguard is going to keep Jamie in play. Greyjoy player's really in a tough spot here. Really tough spot. Kyle doing a great job here, winning initiative and choosing to go first. Keeps putting the pressure on his opponent here. And it's just hammering him hard, and he's not able to really come back with anything. And he kills Varys. What is going on here? What is going on? I don't know what Ben's up to here, but I didn't expect that at all. And now we got an intrigue coming in. Nine strength. Cersei and Jamie. Two claim because of Cersei's ability. Yeah, I mean, you blocked in a pose, but you're not going to stop the range trigger anyway. So, like, what do you do here? What do you do? And it's going to go on a pose. Oh, you made me. Yeah, I made Spice to winning. So that I have some challenges. Does it just stand a character? Oh, Red Wedding. Can I or can I not trigger it? It's an interrupt, so it happens before. So that moment has already happened. So he plays Red Wedding, but you can't trigger it because the, like they've just said, it's past the opportunity to do it on this challenge. He's actually put himself to zero claim, but plus one from Cersei. So it goes on a pose. You should only take one card for claim, which he does. Victorion, second copy of Victorion we've seen come out of the uh, hand there. And here comes the big power challenge. That is going to win, and he's going to replace the claim and kill Aaron Damp here. But he can save himself and stand himself with the Iron Mines. So he poses for four. So it should be forced reaction first. So he's going to get saved with the Risen from the Sea. Gets plus one strength from that attachment. Stands himself with his uh, ability, but one gold is spent to treachery it. So we knew the treachery was there. He had the gold, so Varus being killed was, I guess, the right call. Because that would have sucked to go pop Varus, and he gets cancelled anyway. But, I mean, he's dead, so that's bad also. I don't know. Both are bad. Both are bad. <laughs> oh, man. And the Queen's Assassin gets dominance on the Lannister side. Really doing work there. Not sure what that stack is on the house card there, but it's probably at 11 or 12 power on the Lannister side. Still only 5 on the Greyjoy side. I think we have to see Valor here on the Greyjoy side. And we do. Into Confiscation. Which is obviously going to get rid of the Risen. So Lannister playoff, Kyle chooses himself to go first. So Risen's going to go away from the uh, confiscation. Then we got Valor. And we should see Iron Mind save Aaron and Neil Jamie. Now if the Lancer player wasn't so far ahead, I think we'd have a game here, but... Uh, the fact there's still claim on the Lancer plot and no claim on the Greyjoy plot is, is not going to be a good round at all. And only two gold on the Greyjoy side with a great haul. How much can he get into play? I mean, only a Western fiefdoms and four gold on the other side, but still, those great hauls are awkward when you don't have a lot of gold. I mean, you can get some cheap uniques in, but other than that, it doesn't really help you out. And, of course, we see Tyrion. And it doesn't look like anything to place. It's on two gold. Oh, that's too bad. And we got Tyrion who can generate money and still get a Burnman into play. Which is gross. Challenges over to Lannister here. 
So he's going to do an intrigue, gain some money, stealth out Aaron Dampier, go on a pose. And another big body on the entry, King Balon. And there's the Birdman. And a military challenge is going to come in and kill Dampair most likely. And that'll go on oppose. Yep, Dampair in the dead pile. And over to the Greyjoy player, probably passing on challenges here. Yeah, uh, I don't see us going any further here. Unless the Lancer player just wants to Valor himself, but uh, I don't see that happening. Already seen two big Econ plots from the Greyjoy player. I just don't see him playing anything that really is going to get him back into play here. I mean, a march to the wall is only going to get rid of a Burnman. Still leave Jamie and Tyrion on the board. Hey, yep. A march into a first snow. So that first snow is going to lock it down here. Greyjoy player is not really going to be able to play much. Not seeing any economy on the Great Hall. Fiefdom's not really seeing any economy on the Lannister side. No, no, no Tywin. No other econ. So both pretty tight on the econ here in this match. But the uh, Lannister player just seeing the better characters and winning that initiative. Going first, hammering the opponent before he can come back with anything. And that Varys... That Varys getting killed or possibly cancelled just sealed the deal in my opinion and we see Ben just concede there and congrats to Kyle for winning that one. Uh, it's just too bad for that Greyjoy Reigns just falling behind on the uh, range triggers and uh, producing characters. But yeah, that was, a, that was a good game. Good game either way but plenty more coming up. Like I said we got graduated cut games coming up. Four of those and we're hitting the top 16 for Game of Thrones. Going to try to pump those out here this week. So stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Like I said, hit that notification icon. If you want to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon.com. Forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. Get your name in the credits at the front and end of the video. And just support what we do here. But yeah, tons more content coming up, guys. So stick around. Leave comments below. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.